since we went from an outdoor venue to an indoor venue, I'm going to keep my Yankee hat on. That offends nobody. <laughs> but uh, I'd like to introduce uh, our uh, vice chair, uh, Rick Berry, who's also my uh, radio partner. And I'll do a, an abashed, uh, uh promotion, but we have uh, uh, Rick and Rick at Night show on at 6 o'clock Monday night on WIKI 95.3, and our, we are blessed to have two wonderful guests, uh, candidate for Senate Richard Murdoch and candidate for the Indiana General Assembly uh, Jim Lucas. So, Rick Berry. Hi, everybody. It's really great to be here. And uh, let's hear it for that program earlier. For those of you who are it, uh, can you hear me? It is uh, my distinct pleasure to introduce our first speaker. That is Judd McMillan. Judd is our representative from the 68th District. And that's down around uh, Ohio County and uh, Switzerland County and uh, I think Dearborn County, some of that area. Judd was born and raised in southern Indiana. Judd understands the values that are important to the people of our area. Judd graduated from Franklin County High School where he excelled both as a student and an athlete. Since graduating from college with a bachelor's degree in economics, and, and earning his law degree, Judd has returned home and continues to be a leader who cares about his community. I do have one little story about Judd. I was talking to Josh South last night. Josh is the vice chair of the Switzerland County Republican Party. And I said, Josh, I hear a lot of great things about what you're doing in Switzerland County. You've really turned things around. People are showing up at meetings. Uh, they're showing their passion and uh, you know, just doing things in the community to promote the Republican Party. And Josh said, well, he said, I'd love to take credit for that, but really, it's not me. He said, Judd McMillan is the one that's generating the renewed interest in the Republican Party and conservative values. So uh, with that said, it's my pleasure to introduce Judd McMillan. Thank you, Rick. You're, you're very kind. And Josh, thank you very much for that. I, uh, I appreciate everything you do in Switzerland County. And thanks to all of you guys for coming out. I think this is an incredibly important thing that we're doing here, especially as we inch closer and closer to the primary, that, that people get together and get educated. And I'll be very brief up here, uh, or relatively brief for uh, an attorney who is into politics. <laughs> uh, very slowly, but, um, I don't want to take too much of your time because you got some great candidates from the 6th district, uh, sixth district that you're going to get to hear from uh, here. you got a great candidate for District 69, and Jim Lucas, that you're going to get to hear. And obviously, I think everybody is in this room to hear from one man and one man only, really, and, and that is your next senator, Richard Murdoch, who I've had the opportunity to work with in the State House, and I can tell you uh, is going to serve you very, very well and serve this state and this country very well. So uh, we're all looking forward to doing that. Um, I got to thinking about what I would talk about when I got the microphone up here. And there are all kinds of things that you know, we're here all preaching the same message. We want conservative values and, and we want people to remember to be honest with us and all those types of things. And there are a bunch of things that popped into my mind that I could talk about. Uh, I could talk about the uh, education reforms that are necessary or probably have with our criminal justice system, what it means to taxpayers. Uh, I could talk about some of the tax structure problems, comprehensive energy reform, all those types of things that need to be done. That, that Mr. Murdoch will be working on for us. Um, but then I got to think that there's one thing that I don't think we hear enough about at the national level, and it's something that I want to talk about today. And let me apologize in advance if any of it is offensive to anybody. If I offend anybody by saying anything that I believe up here, but you will find, if you get to know me uh, very well, that I have a fuse for political correctness that's about this long. Praise God. Yeah. 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 We just don't have room for that to get the right thing done. We have to be willing to have the courage of our convictions to say what we mean and to mean what we say and to stick by our guns and really do it. So here's what I'm going to talk about a little bit today. Um, we heard out there some very, very moving stories about Gold Star parents and people who have given their life. Now, who in here has seen the movie? I just saw it a couple weeks ago. It's a very, very powerful movie. It's an older movie. It's not anything that you would have seen recently. Saving Private Ryan. Everybody seen the movie? Phenomenal movie. Absolutely phenomenal. Who can tell me who remembers what the message was to young Private Ryan 
when Tom Hanks, I apologize, I don't know his name uh, in the movie, but when he was when he was being carted out, and there's Tom Hanks dying on the battlefield, and he pulls him in close. Who, who remembers what he said to him? Earn this. Earn this. Earn it. What we have to be doing is earning things. And that's what I want to talk about a little bit. Our military, and the people that you Gold Star parents know this all too well, our military is earning things. They're out there earning things for us. And this country is based on people earning things. That's right. It has been since its inception. People needed to earn what they got. We have created a system now in the United States of America of entitlement programs. We have intentionally created a system that divorces consequences from actions. And that problem, ladies and gentlemen, has to be fixed. We can no longer have a system that rewards people who do not want to recognize the consequences for their actions. I do my best to make the best decisions I can every day. I don't always succeed. I make mistakes. I've made them before. I'll make them again. But I can honestly tell you that when I look back at the mistakes that I have made in the past, I made those mistakes because I did not give the appropriate amount of deference to what the consequences for my actions would be. All of us want to make good decisions so that we can be in a better lot in life. And all of us want to be able to help people who have made poor decisions or have found, uh, found themselves falling on tough times. That happens from time to time. So don't mistake this message for me being less than passionate for people who need help. We as a, as a flourishing country have developed a system where we can help those who are less fortunate and we need to help those who are less fortunate. But when our entitlement programs get to be so big that we want to take care of everybody rather than just those who have to have it, we can't take care of anybody. When people aren't forced to earn it who can, then those people who can't earn it can't get the help that they need. Those who can must. Those who can must. Uh, that, that was something that was told to me when I was debating whether or not I was ever going to run for office. And, and I ran for it and, and, and blessed to be here today to talk about these things. But somebody told me once, and I was thinking, why would I do that? Uh, I'm, I'm, things are going very well for me in my private life, my personal life. I know if I run for political office, what's going to happen is I'm going to probably make less money. I'm going to have less time. I'm going to get my name dragged through the mud all over the place. What is appealing about that? And it makes you think you've got to be a little bit insane to want to run for political office. <laughs> But somebody that I greatly respect one day sat me down and said, Judd, those who can must. And what he meant by that was that if we don't have people who can do this and who do have the courage of their convictions and who are willing to step up to the plate and do the right thing for the right reasons, then who is left to run for the offices? It's the people who lack the spine to have the courage of their convictions. Uh, you know, you look at our system right now, we are a capitalistic system, which I am happy to participate in. But what you have all too often is you have these people who are successful in the private industry saying, why would I run for an office to make less money, have less free time, have my name directed in mud? I'm perfectly happy being successful where I am. And so what we have left are the people who got spit out the bottom of the private industry, who weren't able to make it. And they look around and they say, well, geez, this isn't working very well. What else can I do? I can run for government. I can be a part of that system. And those are the people that we end up having make the decision if those who can don't. So those who can, must. Now, the system of entitlements that we have created, it creates a situation in which those people are disincentivized. I guess that's a word. Is that a word? Disincentivized? All right. If I used it, you guys know what it meant. I consider it a word. But they lack the incentive to go out there and to work for themselves. I mean, we can sit around all we want, and we can complain about people who are taking advantage of the system. I hear it all the time. Uh, I had somebody I talked to yesterday that was um, and appeared to be in great physical condition, had a great conversation with me, all these types of things. Uh, and it was in a situation where they were retaining me to do some work for them. And there was absolutely nothing wrong with this person. You can tell that there's something wrong with somebody. And they told me, you know, I'm going to have trouble paying you because I, all I get right now is my disability. And this was a 30-year-old, perfectly healthy person. All I get is my disability. And I probably can't pay you until I get my tax refund. Are you kidding me? Your tax refund? I mean, that kind of stuff just eats me up. And it makes me passionate about entitlement. Now we can sit in here right now. And we can talk about this issue of entitlement. And I think all of us can agree that it needs to happen. 
We need to start teaching men to fish rather than giving men to fish. But it won't happen until we can't make those people earn it until you guys, and that's why you're here today, make your elected officials earn it. They have to earn it as well. They have to earn your vote. You have to be educated about who you're voting for. You have to make sure that you're putting people into the seats who have the courage of their convictions to do what's right. And all too often, we have people in office who want to get up and want to talk about these kind of things. Uh, quite frankly, they don't even want to talk about this. That's why we don't hear enough about it. Because it's tough. It's tough to tell people who have their hand out that it's no longer going to be filled with government subsidies. Uh, you look at history about how the systems have worked in the past, how government systems have worked in the past. And you talk about the Greeks and the Romans who tried to do things like this. Now, they started off with very good systems. In fact, they started off with republics, which is, make no mistake about it, what we have. They let slip into a democracy. And it's a very, very important distinction between a republic and a democracy. The difference is in a democracy, the people actually have the power directly in their hands. The republic is a representative form. And the Greeks were the first to recognize that democracy can never be a permanent form of government. And that's what our founding fathers knew when they gave us a republic. And I have this debate with people all the time about whether we have a republic or a democracy. And if you need proof, we just stood up and we pledged allegiance to that flag and to the republic for which it stands. That's, right. that's what we have as a republic. But the Greeks recognized early on that it could never be a permanent form of government because in a democracy, when you put the power directly in the hands of the people, and the decisions are made by the elected officials. It doesn't take long for the people to realize that they can elect the official that will give them the most gifts out of the public coffers. And when they're electing the officials that give them the most gifts out of the public coffers, it doesn't take long for those public coffers to run dry. And so what we have now, we have, quite frankly, politicians who are out there telling people, I will give you the most gifts out of the public coffers. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will be the ultimate demise of our system. We can talk about all the other problems you want. We can talk about the education reform, all the other things, the, the comprehensive energy reform. Those types of things that need to happen, and they all do. But until we can make sure that people who are willing to get up every day, to work hard, to set the example that's necessary, to go out and be, be creative, have original ideas, get involved in our system, and actually work to make a dollar, until we can make sure that that is rewarded, and that the people who would wallow in laziness and apathy and not be a part of this system have to be have to realize that they just can't make it doing that any longer. Until we realize that, and until we elect people who have the courage or the convictions to make that happen, then none of those other things can be addressed and none of those things are protected in our country. And that's that's the, the very real problem that we're facing right now. And so my message to you would be this. Uh, it, it, it's very simple. Um, elect people. Get out there and educate yourself. Make them earn your vote. They need to earn it because not only do you know that they are telling you the right things, but they will do the right things. The time for lip service, ladies and gentlemen, is over. And I don't want to be apocalyptic about this because this is a great country. And we have found uh, ways time and time again to be resilient and to bounce back. And I'm confident that we are in one of those times now and we will find a way to be resilient and we will bounce back. But we have to earn it. We have to go out there and we have to make sure that we are protecting the rights that those people who die for this country have given us. Freedom is not free. It's not even cheap. It's expensive. And you have to take the time to educate yourself, to be ready to get out there and to, to vote for people who will not put, not just be giving gifts out, but who will be doing the right thing for this country. And that's not a very easy thing to do. Now, with that said, uh, I hope you give some time to, to Jim Lucas, who you're about to hear from, running for uh, the state representative city in District 69, a very, very qualified candidate, somebody who I can promise you shares these views, and is ready to stand up in the line of battle and make sure that he casts the tough votes so that we can get the right thing done here in the state of Indiana. And I know you guys uh, were here to hear about more national issues, but I can tell you this, the state of Indiana is doing a pretty good job. And it's, you look at the state of Indiana compared to other states, and it's because we're making the tough decisions. Uh, the last two sessions we were in up there, they were not easy sessions. We had people walking out who wouldn't show up to their jobs. We had people who wanted to come back and spread, I won't even say half-truths, they wanted to spread non-truths about the, the policies that they were encouraging. But we stood up and made the right decisions, and now you see the result. Now we need to take that message to the national level. Indiana is a leader now. Indiana has to bring the country along with them 
and make sure that our country stops operating in the red, stops operating red, and starts operating in black, just like the state of Indiana is. Right. <laughs> Entitlement reform, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't get enough attention. It doesn't get enough attention because it's a very difficult topic to talk about. And it doesn't get that attention because, quite frankly, your politicians, a lot of them, uh, have a very, very long fuse for political correctness. In fact, that's one of the things that they want to address first. They want to make sure they're politically correct. One of the best pieces of advice I ever got was just stand up and do what's right and let the political consequences shake out for themselves. We have to elect people who do that. But the only way we can do it is if you guys educate yourself and, and respect those people and stand up for them and help them just like you're doing right now for Richard Murdoch. And uh, what you can do to help is not just stop here, but get out and talk to other people. Spread the message. I know you've heard it a million times, but it's never been more important than it is right now. So get out, spread the message, talk to people, make sure that we elect conservative candidates who mean it and who are willing to earn it. And that's my message to you today. With that, I give you Jim Lucas. Thank you very much for your time.